So for somebody to buy from you, results are great. Professional side of it is great. But I don't know about you, but if I had a coach there that had a thousand results, but he was an absolute prick, I still wouldn't sign up with him. If you're struggling and you're not full with clients, but you haven't put your time and focus, there's a reason that we say focus on that. And there's also a reason why even now at seven figures, we're going back to step one again. You're going to get to a point where you're capped there. You're capped because you're only one person, if you even are a person. So this is the problem is that they always want to do the bare minimum. I, I do post every day. No, but what you post is not good enough. Three things you need to grow and scale your online fitness business. Hey guys, we are Dan and Mike, and we are here to talk to you about how to grow your online fitness business. And we want to help you in any way we can. We do. We've got new handles. We have, yeah. So big thing is, I suppose part of this video, this video we're talking about um, online coaching kind of business strategy, as it were. Within that, there's an element of branding, to be fair. And we've just changed our brand name, haven't we, mate? We have. It's not fallen too far from the, the tree, has it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not, not a huge change, really, is it? You've probably not noticed, to be fair. Yeah, Gordon's uh, fuming because he's animated our YouTube introduction. Uh, has he? Oh, yeah, yeah, and banter. yeah, he's going to have to change it all now. Has biz he? Business and banter, yeah. He didn't get the memo. He did get the memo. He, did get, he knew long he before anyone else did. He just didn't, didn't get there in time. So, um, yes, yeah, so we're now business and banter. Dan and Mike from business and banter. Um, we have to change the YouTube channel, everything. It's going to cost a fortune. Emails. Yeah. Oh, no. That's daft, it? I have to change all the stationery. I think we'll get this guy. Oh, yeah, 40% sometimes. <laughs> so, uh, um, I love that bit there. Oh, it's brilliant. I love that. But anyway, sometimes. so yeah, so today in this video, we're going to talk about business strategy when it comes to online coaching. And uh, this came about um, because, uh, how do I put Ooh. this politely? <laughs> um, anyway, I had someone come to me who felt like he needed a very solid business strategy as an online coach. Um, when it came to his online business and building that up to where he wanted it to be, he felt like he needed a, song, a, a solid concrete strategy to get him to, to where he wanted to be. And um, he wasn't majorly happy with the advice I gave um, in the first couple of weeks. I'll be completely honest. I'll hold my hands up and say that. Um, but I would not have changed my advice in one, any way, shape or form. Literally there's wouldn't have changed hook. it. So there's your hook. So yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit about kind of how to grow the main things you need to focus on when you're looking to grow and, and why ultimately business strategy is actually something that's probably holding you back a little bit from building an online coaching business because it can almost seem too simple and too basic. I think you don't believe that it can just be about this one thing that we're going to talk about and then what it leads to in the future. But what Mike talked about there with the three steps basically is that the first step is the most important and the third step is essentially so that you can create more time to go back to doing more of the first step again. That's called an open loop. So stick around. Stick around. Yeah. yeah. So the first step in a fitness business or pretty much any business that you need to figure out is your avatar, your USB, uh, and how you're going to market towards that particular person. That's, that's the first thing. So as an online coach, that's essentially content. What content are you going to be putting out? How often are you going to put it? Put, uh, how often are you going to be putting it out, sorry? Who are you going to be talking to? And how are you demonstrating why your product, service, coaching is better than everything else? That's the first step. It's no good thinking about scaling a business, employing people, um, even to some degree client results until you can actually get people through the door. Mm. So your first step, and the, the first step of, of any business realistically is okay, how are we going to sell this? Who are we selling it to? And how are we going to market and advertise whatever it is that we're selling? Yeah, because ultimately, look, content is the biggest factor in any online coaching business. Like Mike said, that you have to know your avatar, you have to know who you're talking to. And we can talk all day long about how many leads you want to generate, how many clients you want in the business, but they have to be the right type of client, the right type of person. You have to be the right coach for them. You have to be essentially the shop window is your content your Instagram page is going to attract the people into your business. So when we talk about business strategy, the main thing, the main thing you have is your Instagram page. That is literally the hook to draw people in. So when I would say the first place you need to start on is understanding your niche to a T and then creating niche specific content and improving upon that content. It is literally because that is going to draw then those people to your page. Once they start inquiring about your coaching, you can then start thinking about, okay, how am I going to build a better coaching package? How am I going to get better results with them? And how am I going to drive my business forward from there? But it's almost like trying to put the horse, uh, the cart before the horse. That's the saying, isn't it? That's it. Trying to put the cart you do, before the horse. You, you, do, you actually do want. You do the need the horse before the, before the cart. cart yeah. yeah, that's the that's the right one. Um, and 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 too Unless many. Unless it's dead. Well, yeah, then it'll be useless. Wouldn't that be pointless? Yeah. So you might have to strike it yourself. Put, put it, 
behind. Yeah, yeah you put it then in the car. Then it'd probably go behind. Yeah. yeah. Or in the car, yeah, even. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Get um, a new horse to pull. <laughs> that's what online coaches do a lot, right? Is that they think they need all this amazing stuff behind the scenes, in the background, and their content ship. And it's kind of like, well, there's no point you refining your coaching process, looking at how good your attention is, looking at how good your processes are, looking at how good your onboarding is, looking at how good or the next long form piece of content you might want to do, like YouTube or anything like that. Or it's, a members group or a type form or a website. Or anything like, like that. Because fundamentally, you have to get people inquiring and reaching out to want to start that process. And without content, without niche specific content, and without doing it for weeks and months on end and having the data from that content to know which content's going well, which content's going shit, what you take more of, less of, you will not know what you need to do in your business going forward. So in terms of a strategy, fundamentally, you will be starting posting content for two, three months because that is fundamentally going to set your business up for the future. So before we move to point two, I'm going to talk to you about what you actually need to do with your content on Instagram. So your Instagram needs to convey two things, who you work with and why you're the best person for them. So who you work with is what we've just spoke about, your avatar, your niche. Most coaches and even mentors get this wrong. I actually don't believe that men, I think, I hand on heart believe this, right? I think other mentors have seen us going on about niche, left, right and center. And they're trying to, they're almost trying to rehash it, but it's, it's wrong, like it's wrong. I, was, I, wrote, I wrote an email about this today. You Did don't you? know this. I wrote this in an email. Because uh, I think people mm -hmm. are looking at what we're doing and they're getting it wrong. Yep. Because what's happening is people are going, okay, niche, um, male or female, what age bracket, what do they do as a job? That, that's, not, that's, not, that's not niche. It's funny you say that because that's literally is what it? I wrote in the email. Is I it? literally wrote in the email that I think that this is our speciality that we do that no one else knows no how way. to do it, right? And I said that most people just go down, right, male or female, what job have they got? And I use an example of like shift workers who want to do this, want to do that. Yeah. And then I said in it, I said, that's 50% of it. Yeah. And I said, the other 50% is the stuff that I'm not going to tell you in this email because it's for our yeah. clients, right? And that comes down to the things that I think we're very good at because I said that we can effectively work with shift workers, but we'd work with different types of shift workers as someone else because yeah. of our way we go, go about our niche and stuff Absolutely. that we only tell our clients. And it's fascinating to say because I literally wrote this email out saying, people, I, I literally wrote it out saying, you probably hear people bang on about having a niche, having an avatar, or whatever. And I said, well, what does it even mean? I said, because most people have no clue what it means. Most people just go age, gender, job which is why they set on busy professionals yeah. who want to lose weight and, and eat the food yeah. love or whatever and then when people work with us they go right now i get it and i'm like uh -huh. right now you get it because there's 50 percent of the pie you're not gonna whole pie jenny well, um that they're just not getting because again we come back to it over and over again is that other business mentors in our opinion didn't do this right when they were doing it when they were coaching they got lucky maybe based all their um their progress and success on results which we did to a degree but i think the one thing that we had above all the other people who've got success but not in the same way is that we knew our niche and we knew exactly how to talk to them and we actually didn't provide value because all the other mentors are going provide value to your niche we didn't provide value yeah at all we do now these are great um but we didn't at the time. That wasn't our focus. And we go into that with our clients and all that sort of stuff in the members. And I'm not going to give it to you now because uh, that's cheating. Yeah. So, so going back to the two things that you need to convey. So like we said, who you're talking to and, um, and why you're the best coach for them. Now, why you're the best coach for them is then broken down into further two stages. And that's uh, in a professional sense and in a personable sense. So professional sense is, okay, so what do you have that's better than what they're currently doing? Um, i.e. what's your service like, why you're such a good coach, why it's bespoke, why you're on hand for this and on hand for that and it's not cookie cutter and it's not this and it's not that. That's the professional side, demonstrating exactly what it is you do as a job so that it's tangible. Somebody can can kind of feel what they're going to get when they come to you. Like when our clients were coming to us when we were doing fat loss, they they already expected, they already knew what was going to be happening. They already knew what we stood for. They already knew what our values were. They, they kind of knew they weren't going to get palmed off with a diet plan or um, left, you know, unread and left without check-ins and late. They, they knew. And then they were, they were therefore coming in expecting the price to actually be higher in a lot of cases than what they were thought it was going to be. So you need to demonstrate from a, from a professional sense. And then equally, if not more importantly, is the personable sense. You're in a business where you're expecting somebody to buy from you in terms of providing them a week-to-week -week service. This is not a product-based business. So for somebody to buy from you, 
results are great. The professional side of it is great. But I don't know about you, but if I had a coach there that had a thousand results, but he was an absolute prick, I still wouldn't sign up with him. They have to like you. So then you go, okay, well, how do I get somebody to like me? And that's demonstrating your sense of humor, your hobbies, your interests, your opinions, um, your life, the things that connect you to your audience above and above above and beyond fitness because that doesn't connect your audience they're not into fitness yet but instead it's it's golf it's your missus is bad cooking it's love island it's married at first sight it's it's football it's other general hobbies interests it's dogs it's it's fucking cats it's kids it's you know for pedophiles um they love they love them can't say that these days Really? Yeah, I'll get a flight on YouTube now. It's done. Will it? Yeah. Well, I'll cut that out. Channel's then. gone. <laughs> oh, no. Um, I can't say anything these days, can you? Yeah. Can't even say man or woman nowadays, so oh. there you go. But, but it's, it's that side of things. So what we were finding is that when people come in to work with us, they weren't price shopping. They weren't looking for other coaches. Yep. They knew that they wanted to work with us based on the professional sense. They're fucking good at their job. They get good results. I know what they stand for. And a personal sense. I actually like this person. The only way you get someone to like you is by being yourself and putting yourself out there. Trying to educate, provide value. Great. Good for you. But it doesn't get anybody to like you. Well, well that's what some of your coaches are doing now and they're struggling. So yeah. that, that's why I always say to coaches when they come in, I kind of go, well, look, you've been doing that. Yeah. So how about we change, you listen to me and we change ideas a little bit because that's the, the thing is that they're so obsessed with doing that. And again, it's safe. And we talk about this a lot and, and in past videos, I'm not going to go on about it now. They do it because it's safe and they know what to do and they copy other coaches. They think it's the right thing to do. Um, but you need to do that for about three to six months before you're going to see the next, again, the next stage of the process we're going to talk about in a second. But, you know, the first three to six months is you refining that process, getting used to that process. But also during those three, six months, you develop that process. The content you post in that first two weeks is not going to be the same as the content you post six months later because it takes time. Much in the same way your client squat isn't the same after six months of coaching them. It's exactly the same thing. It takes time. It takes reps. And it might seem like it's slow and a bit boring and, and not not business-like, but trust me, this is exactly what's got us to where we are today. Uh, and it's what has got all our clients to where they are as well. It's literally refining that process of content over time until you get to a place where you feel like, okay, my client numbers are building up and feel like they're getting good. And then you move on to the next step, which is to go, right, well, are you full? That would be the next question, isn't it? It's like, right, what do you do then once you're full with clients, let's say, once you've done that for, for let's say six to 12 months, because it's probably going to take that long. Yeah, so, so, so absolutely. So step one is marketing, advertising, which is essentially content step two yeah. is coaching your clients damn well um coaching them well increasing retention getting full and then getting yourself to a position where you, you should essentially be moving to step three um so at step two it's perfect onboarding perfect retention schemes and then potentially moving into some some kind of scalable option so that could be um bringing on another coach for example it could be having another product it could be having a group coaching. It could be um, outsourcing your video editing. It could be outsourcing your copywriting. It could be outsourcing some admin work. It's essentially you're getting to the point where you're now looking at things that are going to free up some time. Um, because if you've built up to this, this, this stage where you're doing your content, that's going out great. You've got clients that are coming in. You're getting good success with them. They're, they're, they're being retained. You're going to get to a point where you're capped there. You're capped because you're only one person if you even are a person these days, um, you're capped because of the, the, the time. We're going to talk about scale on a different video, but there's not much scaling that you can do through price alone. So your, your business is going to stagnate there. So it's then where you need to start to think about, right, okay, well, are we going to do something that, that kind of shifts the tide to, to free up a little bit more time? So that's that step. So, you know, it's getting full. And look, for some people, that'll take a long time. You know, I said there's six to 12 months. It could take 24 months. It takes as long as it takes for you to refine that content. But this is the thing is with, with coaches, they're trying to run before for they us, can walk. It took us four years. Yeah, yeah. Oh, people don't want to hear that, right? It took four years, but yeah, it, it, took it, takes, four years. it takes a while for you to get to that point. And, and, and what you're going to do every, every, and the reason we go through this three-step process is that this is constantly going through cycles of this process. So then step three then, is to buy back more of that time. So with the money you've got from those clients you invested, you then figure out a way where you go, right, I'm as efficient as I can be with these clients, doing all this sort of stuff. I then go, right, like you just said, you go, someone's going to write my emails for me. Someone's going to do my video editing for me. Cheers, Gordon. Um, someone's going to do something like that. And why do we do that? The reason we do that is that we can then have more time to put out more content. And you get back to step one. 
until you then build that product up to scale to, to, to the, the max almost, and then go, right, we've maxed that out. What's the next thing we need to do? And you just repeat then step three. Step three is that point at which you're putting then money out effectively. You're then paying money out to get your time back. And with that time you get back, you're then reinvesting it into step one, which is content. That's all it is. It's just cycles of, 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 um, of rinsing and repeating. Um, five years ago, me and Dan put time and effort. The first person that we invested in um, was a, vi a videographer. We knew it was content. That content allowed us to get over who we wanted to work with and what's unique about us. That then filled us up. We then looked to scale, which was we launched a group coaching and we started to bring on coaches. We then got full from that and we needed to scale again with outsourcing various bits and bobs, copywriter, videographer, so on and so forth, right? Which allowed us to do less work whilst the money was being generated from a group coaching product and, um, and our other coaches. That time that we then had back through not coaching all of these people um, in terms of client fulfillment and writing emails and editing videos, we then just put right back to the beginning in terms of the content once again. And then we did it again. The same things happened. So we, when we started to work with coaches, it was content, content, content. I think I put out um, more than a post a day for four months, um, which... <clears throat> could have been more if I, you know, if I, if I'd had more time and should have been more if I had more time, but it was content, content, content. We're now at the point where we're full. We're now going to scale. So we're going to offload some stuff. So i.e., we've got another product that's coming out soon. So keep your eyes peeled for that. That's going to allow us to fill that middle product up. That's not going to take me and Dan any time, which then allows our one-to-one -one time to come down. That one-to-one -one time we can then put back into the beginning, you guessed it, right at the beginning again, content again. So instead of the 30 posts that we're putting out per month now, can we double that to 60, 70, 80? And, and the reality is that's your strategy, is that can you double the content? And in theory, if you double the content, double the eyes, you should double the input and you'll double the people in on, on the back end. And the problem with all this thing about strategy is that that strategy there is that long fact is most most coaches don't get past this bit yeah they're just they never get full and so when then we say look you need to focus on your content they might get a bit pissed off and think they need all this amazing stuff it's like no there's a reason you're not full and it's because your content shit like let's call it what it is like let's not beat around the bush that's what you need to focus on time and time again now content comes down to obviously instagram email all these other things but that's where you need to put your time and focus and it's probably where if you're struggling and you're not full with clients where you haven't put your time and focus there's a reason that we say focus on that and there's also a reason why even now at seven figures we're going back to step one again people think that when you get to a higher level that there's this amazing thing so you watch alex hormozy right you can't move on instagram for him or youtube he literally launched his book right which he wanted to be one of the biggest launches ever and you look at his webinar that he did that and he said yeah uh, i think I can't remember what it was now about eight i think it was a thousand pieces of content in the month leading up yeah. to it um and he's just got the amount of pieces of content he's done in his lifetime. He's just like, it, that's all he's done. So it's not that, it's just us saying it. Like this is proof, you, Gary Vee's another prime example. You, again, Gary Vee posts probably about 12 bits of content a day across platforms. Success leaves clues. Do you think that's the wrong thing to do then? Do you think that's not a good strategy? I'd say it's a pretty good fucking strategy to focus on creating more content that's niche specific. All the big guns are doing it. All the big guns are focusing on it because we have this, these free platforms People moan all the time about Instagram reach all the time. Oh, my reach is shit. Oh, no, your content's shit. Instagram's a free platform and it will push good content to people. It will. It does all the time because they want you on their, on their platform. They do. The problem is, is that take this person that came into to you. They're looking at something revolutionary in terms of the product. They think you're going to do something with the product. Should you launch a different, you know, I, you know, product or service or whatever. That that's what coaches think. They mm. think I need um, a, a notion so that I've got this onboarding sequence. The problem up for it. <laughs> yeah, the, the problem is is the lead generation. And whether you like it or not, mm. that lead generation is going to come from your your marketing and advertising aka content on all platforms so get good at that stuff and and put more time and effort into that stuff to get better quicker that's where your focus is yeah coaches don't want to hear it though because it's the the most um difficult to get well, it's, right it's also the thing they think they're doing yeah so this is the problem is that they always want to do the bare minimum i, I do post every day no but what you post is not good enough yeah i post every day Look, a, a Canva image with a bit of wording on isn't a post. Mm -hmm. It's not enough. Again, you don't understand your niche. You don't understand your avatar. You don't understand those things well enough to create good enough content. So it might seem very basic, but much in the same way that, that they get, coaches get clients come to them and go, oh, I want to I really build my arms up. And it's like, you're 60 kilos. Like, just train hard for a bit. 
Mm. It's the same thing. Like it, it's, it's majoring in the minors and coaches are very, very good at that. And it, it, like I said, they don't want to hear it because they think they're already doing that. Mm. So when we say create better content, oh, I'm already, I'm already creating content and you're having conversations. Yeah, but you're not. Because if you were having the right type of conversations and posting the right type of content, we wouldn't be sat here. So there we have it. Three stages to uh, your business strategy as an online coach. It's content, it's get full, it's then scale and build something different with a coach or another product to get more time back to go back to the content and go through the same process again every single time, all the way through. Go create more content.